Graham and Al Siciliano, and your referee in charge, Mr. Mitch Halpern. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this first bout is scheduled for 12 rounds, and it's for the vacant NABF Super Bantamweight Championship. Introducing, fighting out of the red corner, he wears the black trunks with red trim. He weighed in at 120 and a half pounds. He's from San Diego, California. His professional record stands at 12 wins against six defeats with eight knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Juan Luis Torres. And his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks. He weighed in at 122 pounds. He comes to us from Tijuana, Baja, California, Mexico. His record, an unblemished 16 wins against no defeats with 14 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Eric Morales. That's time now for the NABF rules. And there they are, Dave. At 10 points to the winner of a round, three judges score the fight. The referee does not figure into it. The referee may stop the fight, however. No standing eight count. Three knockdown rule has been waived here. The fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. That is uh, Juan Luis Torres getting ready to do battle with the undefeated Eric Morales. They are fighting for the vacant NABF crown never seen an NABF crown that wasn't vacant. People, <laughs> Jesus Salute vacated his to go for a world shot, and in truth, without being cynical, that's why they are always vacant, normally, because guys win them and they want to move on to world titles. And when they win them, guaranteed world rating that goes with them, so it gives them a stepping stone, gets them back into the picture. They're there, it's a place to jump off from, and when they jump off, they leave the title behind. A few defended, but uh, not too many. See the knockout ratio favoring Morales radically. By exactly a two to one ratio. And it's a, for him a chance to get some good exposure here and maybe see if somebody can go some rounds with him and extend him and show him some crafty skills. And that would be what Juan Torres wants to do. Torres at 28, facing the 19 year old Morales, told us today that, uh, actually yesterday, that uh, he feels his experience is going to make a big difference. He's seen Morales and says he's a good young prospect, but I am I am more crafty, and already Torres switches to lefty, which both fighters do. He figures he can throw a few things into the mix here and see if he can do anything that will shake Morales up and maybe disturb his rhythm. Try to throw some punches from some weird angles as well. Morales working the jab here early. Crafty fighters really do have trouble, though, getting decisions and calls against undefeated fighters because they're really countering in many respects and don't get a lot of credit for the good things that they might do. We're in round one. It is scheduled for 12. I'm Al Bernstein along with Dave Bontempo as we begin the Friday evening of Top Rank Fox, and we're delighted that you joined us. This tour is switching again and getting caught in the middle. Morales will mark that one. Nice right hand by Eric Morales. He takes a left hook, but his right, the stronger of the two punches. We have a minute left to go here in round one. Morales trying to get some range going with his jab, starting to find it a little bit here as well. And those rounds are both fighters pretty much loading up their best shots and seeing what is going to work throughout the course of this night. A very big ring here. Uh, this is plus 20, almost a 24 foot ring it looks to me, Dave. And of course that will have some bearing later on as you see Michael Nunn in there, he likes to move around. Uh, he can make a 24 foot ring look like a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Under a half minute left to go here in round one. It'd be like the final thing that you would hate about negotiations is finding out how big the ring was when you fought him. That, that is true. Right hand and a hook by Eric Morales. So round one is in the books, and for young Eric Morales at 19 in his first fight in the United States, things are going just fine, thank you. When Torres goes southpaw, Morales shows the way to beat it with the lead right hand. Got right in there, so Eric Morales, the youngster from Tijuana, and that's on his trunk, so you can read that. 
uh, against Juan Luis Torres. Torres is a 28 year old. Morales is 19. Morales came in undefeated at 60 0 with 14 KOs, so some serious knockout pop for Eric Morales. And he did go 10 rounds in his last fight. He would like to get more rounds against other fighters. And this is the perfect guy to measure so many different skills against. He's not a big puncher, but will throw enough to put you in situations where you have to learn, where you must extend yourself. And you might pay a little bit for a mistake, but it won't cost you the fight. And Morales with uh, a substantial edge there. And Torres also didn't land a jab, according to the numbers in round one. Good nice right hand underneath by Torres. Well, he got caught switching again, Dave. He switches from lefty and back to righty and isn't as adept at it as you might want to be. You have to be very fast when you do that and it helps many times to be on the move. Don't be right in front of your opponent and then do it because you just open up a side of yourself right there. You almost walk into a shot. So many fighters dabble with switching and only a handful are successful and only a handful really know when to do it and how to do it. Halfway through round two as Morales lands a nice uppercut. Torres last fought in December, beating Hugo Torres with a knockout in one round. He's had a little bit of a layoff. We'll see if he tries to buy time on account of that layoff by working more inside and holding, trying to make the fight extend. It seems that Torres changes when he gets a little bit out muscled, not when he's on the offensive, not to try to frustrate Morales. When he's confused himself, he makes the change, and that's why it's been so dangerous. Right by Torres as he tries to find something that will work offensively. But, but Dave Torres has been much more active offensively in this round, even though everything's not landing. He's trying things from different angles, and perhaps for the moment, slowing Morales down, making Morales think about more. That's what the crafty fighter will try to do. And now Torres showing him lots of different looks, and this time not getting caught so much in the switches as he goes from lefty to righty, finding a few holes in Morales' defense. And when he bores in like that, Morales would like to launch the uppercut when Torres gets close enough. They both just miss right hands. So in round two, Torres starts to get his offense going and might even have won this round. At least he made it close. We'll be back. Round three and lands a right hand against Juan Luis Torres. In round two, in round one, Eric Morales had things pretty much his own way, won by a total of 18 punches when the punch numbers came up. And in round two, Torres had a little bit better of a round, showing some of the veteran moves that maybe confused Morales a bit. And he really slowed Morales up at points. Morales should let his hands go here. If he doesn't think that Torres can hurt him, he should really gamble a little bit. Now there, Torres gambled and, and switched for the first time in an offensive mode. He's been doing it defensively. He did it just before throwing a punch. Torres coming in, and it's interesting, the younger man against the veteran, the counterpuncher. Yeah, and a little bit tentative here. You see, he's more upright than he was earlier. He's studying the situation too long. This is exactly what Torres wants. Now, he must extend himself here. Route two, Morales with a, a good edge in the numbers. Round two is close, but the situation here for Morales is he really has to let his hands go, and for Torres, he has to take advantage of every time he's got Morales thinking. Torres is not a huge knockout puncher, and so when you're forced to come in like this, especially against a puncher, it doesn't bode well. And it's common practice to feel that, well, you took away what the other guy was doing, you might have made him look bad, he's not getting shots in. But a fighter has to extend and then go to that next level and attack. More than halfway through round three, Torres switching back and forth. Again, Eric Morales indicated that he switches from time to time, but we have not seen that yet from him. He stayed a righty throughout this match. Torres, twice in a row, went from right-hander to southpaw and almost, he stood up and geared himself to do it. There was an opportunity there for Morales and he needs that split second to fire a right hand home. Round three, there has been less action in terms of punches landed as the 
Morales looks to counter and Torres keeps coming in. There he misses the uppercut. That's been a big weapon for Eric Morales. Morales needs to get back on the stick here, literally with the jab, setting up some other things. As Morales is coming in, whatever side Torres is coming in from, just get the jab moving as a place to find yourself on the floor and then cut loose. Final seconds here of round three. Torres continues to pursue. Morales continues to counterpunch. In round three of this NABF Super Bantamweight Championship. And we'll be back for round four. We hope you will be too. That is Juan Luis Torres as he comes out to face Eric Morales here in round four of this NABF Super Bantamweight Championship match. However, we want to convey to you some other news that is uh, of an important nature about the show. We mentioned to you that Michael Nunn was supposed to fight Terry B. He literally got in here about two hours ago, had to go take an AIDS test, which is mandated in the state. The results are not back in yet. They will not be able to have that fight while we are on the air. So we will not be showing you Michael Nunn against Terry B. We presume that fight will be held, but it will be held after we are off the air. So we are sorry that we cannot bring you Michael Nunn. And to reiterate even more, Michael Nunn was supposed to fight Warren Williams. Nunn could not make the weight. Williams said, I don't want any financial consideration. I want to make Michael Nunn make the weight. Nunn refused to do it. Warren Williams said, I have a contract. I won't fight. And they tried to get Terry B in here to replace him. It didn't work for our purpose. And fingers can be pointed all the way around about not having the situation addressed last night as it should have been. Well, there will be much talked about and much said about that, I'm sure. In any case, for us, what it means is uh, we will just continue on with the boxing that is given to us and that we can give to you. Eric Morales in the black trunks on the right and Juan Luis Torres in the black trunks with the red stripe and red trim. Well, we've changed this fight now into a high-octane chess match. <laughs> it's true. Morales now is uh, not attacking. He doesn't look like somebody with 14 knockouts in 16 fights. He is being given the lesson that secretly his handlers know he needs something like this. And yet there's always trepidation about putting your guy in. What will happen in that situation? And yeah, what will happen there? And it's a tough one. And the interesting thing is he's certainly winning this fight. I don't think there's any question about that. And performing fairly well. But there's also no question that the looks he's getting from Juan Luis Torres is making him less than a potent knockout punch. A good right by Torres. So even though Morales is doing well in a sense, he's also learning. And learning that at 19 you don't know everything there is to know about boxing. And some of the best fights you can have are the ones in which you don't look very good in that might look a little sloppy because they point out so many things that need to be worked on. A fighter has to go against every style out there before hitting the big time. Nice uppercut by Morales. That's a weapon he has used consistently in this box. And there is Davis, what you talked about. Use the jab to set things up, and look what it set up. He found some range, and you know he'll pick up on that. Good right hand by Eric Morales. So as round four comes to a close, Torres in need of a minute's rest. We're back here in Las Vegas, well, on ESPN. It's the Canadian Football League. The Baltimore Stallions, yes, they have a name, will go against San Antonio. That's here on ESPN. That is um, this weekend, and it should be an excellent ball game. And Morales setting things up with the jab. Two nice ones. Put him over the top with the right hand, and it also forbade Torres from getting anything in, and a nice hook to punctuate it by Morales. We're back here in round five. That CFL game, by the way, is Saturday. The graphics said Sunday, but uh, it will be Saturday night, so we urge you all to tune in and uh, catch the Canadian Football League action. This is the NABF Super Bantamweight title match. Torres, as you see, in the black with the red trunks, and Morales is in the black trunks that says Tijuana on them, and for a very good reason, that's his hometown. And at home, if you are looking as the numbers are landed there, if you think that they are less than what you'd see for a super bantamweight fight, 
you are right. The average is 65 to 70 punches per, per round for fighters in this division. Torres, for one, only averaging 28, so far under half of that as he tries to get things going. And uh, it's been a good start for Morales in this fight on my scorecard. Take a look at Dave's scoring. There it is. Morales uh, jumping out to a very fairly comfortable edge after four rounds. Halfway through round five as Torres continues to press forward and continues to take pretty good counter punching from Eric Morales. Morales has had four rounds to see Torres coming forward now and he's been doing some pretty good things in the last couple of rounds, getting a little bit of power going, starting with the jab. Body shots haven't been there for him in this fight. That's one noticeably absent part of his game. A minute left to go here in the fifth round. It is scheduled for 12. And so far, Eric Morales, the 19-year-old from Tijuana, Mexico, is showing us why people consider him quite a good prospect. Even if he is dealing with some stylistic troubles from Torres. And a guy who switches as often as Torres does, as quickly as Torres does, can make you think too much in the ring. Mm -hmm. it's a very good, that's a good way to put that because that's really what's happening to Morales even in winning and in doing some good things in there. It's, he's taking him away from what he is which is a pure power puncher. Nice body work there by Morales as Torres switches to lefty. It's so round five. Pretty good one for Eric Morales and for the veteran Torres he'll need to regroup. Well, there are left hooks, and there are leaping left hooks. Now, that's uh, not the textbook way to do it, but it did get in there for Morales. Shades of Floyd Patterson. Remember when he used to leap with those hooks? We saw, yeah. We saw Gamar Mar with one. We saw Marvin Hagler do it against Tanjo. Mm -hmm. If uh, it, it can work once in a while, and sometimes if you can't close up the distance fast enough, just take the leap. Just jump at him. Man, well, that's what they did. We're approaching the halfway point of this NABF Super Bantamweight Championship. Jesus Lute had the title. He vacated. He is seeking a world uh, championship match. You talk about the leaping left hook, the moral of it is don't miss. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> You're going to throw it, don't miss. Well, we a have small a small edge for Eric Morales, eh? We have a scintillating duel in the jab department. Morales uh, going to a weapon he really needs against this type of style more than some other ones. And he's showing more jabbing than he has in other fights. He hasn't needed to do this much of it in his previous bouts. Morales, I mentioned he is a 19-year-old from Tijuana, had... 114 amateur fights, won 106 of those. Nice right by Torres, that's his best punch of the fight. All those bouts, of course, were in Mexico. Morales has not fought in the United States ever. His first fight here. Do you suppose he, uh, to, well, he's too young to play the slot machines or gamble? And I'm sure he wouldn't, would he? Oh, no. no people, people don't gamble illegally. They don't do anything. that. Okay, just checking. It's, it's interesting to think that you could, in boxing, have a world title before you could be of legal age places. <laughs> That's true. A lot of states you can't drive before some guys win a world title. A little over a minute left to go. We're in round six. It's a 12-rounder. I'm Al Bernstein along with Dave Von Temple. We're humble and obedient servants here as we are most Friday nights. And we will be next Friday when we head down to uh, New Orleans. Get some Creole cooking down there. Can't wait to get back down there again. It's been a while. It has been a long time. In fact, we have a southern tour for the next few weeks. It's going to be in Bay St. Louis, uh, and then another another visit to New Orleans later on in August. Right here in Las Vegas. That's sort of like Ed Sullivan. So right here <laughs> at our show. Right here at our show in Las Vegas. We've got Eric Morales in the black, and in the black and the red, it is Juan Luis Torres. Morales has pretty much dominated this 12-rounder. And uh, 
when we return for round seven, several pledges. I'm sure that the action will heat up, and I'm fairly certain I will do no more impressions throughout the evening. That should be good news to all boxing fans. We'll be back. Well, Torres has an arsenal, we promise you. There's a good shot of right-handed. We'll see if he can come back to that, if he can set that shot up more in this fight. We're in round seven. It's scheduled for 12. It has been pretty much dominated by Eric Morales, who is in the black trunks on the left of your screen. Attacking is Juan Luis Torres, as he has been throughout this fight, really, but not attacking as effectively as he would like. Now, Torres has fired some different combinations at him, different looks. And Torres would be happy in the sense that he's made Morales jab so much. Torres, though, still not taking enough advantage of what he's been able to take away from Morales. He's gotten Morales into a different kind of a game. He has to fire more punches. He's not. Dave with a, a wide edge for Eric Morales. And now Morales looks like he's setting down. And now Torres staying on the inside of him. That could be a problem for Torres. And especially he can be vulnerable there to an uppercut as he had the outside taken away from him. Now you're seeing some loading up here by Morales. Morales, when he loads up, he gets he get caught like he did there. His hands are way down. That's one thing I'm sure his handlers will look at after this fight. Things to correct in future fights. He really takes a wide cut when he wants to take a big shot. He is not bringing his hands back so quickly after he throws those body punches. Torres missing, gets hit with an excellent combination. Good right hand, a three-punch combination by Morales. He's going after the veteran now. He's turning into his shots more. His balance is a little bit better. Still very wide with his legs, though. You know what you do have to like about Morales, though? He picks his spots pretty well, Dave. For a 19-year-old guy to have that much poise, not bad. And to be able to adjust in a fight like this and go with things that haven't been presented to him before. Now he has to look for his openings in this fight as opposed to his previous encounters when the opponent was tailor-made and walked into a shot. Under a minute left to go here in round seven. If you joined us late, let me remind you, Michael Nunn will not be fighting in our main event as was advertised. He was supposed to fight Warren Williams. Couldn't fight him because Nunn came in overweight by two pounds. Williams said he would not take financial considerations to let Nunn fight. He wanted Nunn to lose the weight. Nunn wouldn't do it. So they got a different opponent. Terry B, he came in and um, got in here too late for his A's test to come back to be on our air. They may have that fight after we're off the air, but they're not going to have it while we're on the air. And so Michael Nunn will not fight. And we'll just bring you all the boxing they give us. Round seven, meanwhile, coming to a conclusion, and it was one of the best rounds Eric Morales has had in this fight, if not the best round. <laughs> there is the cut over the left eye of Eric Morales, which may have come from a clash of heads, we don't know. And it looks like none has been called here, which would be very significant. Let's take a look and see if it was a clash of heads. Oh, the heads are right there together. There's a nice left hand. That oh, yeah. then brings on the heads. They salute each other and the cuts come up. Get a closer angle of it. Nice left hook thrown in there. Then the heads come together from the natural body momentum. Now, if a butt is called and then causes the fight to be stopped, they would go to the scorecards here in which Morales has a tremendous edge anyway. Where well, that would be really crucial would be if that was in a very close fight. We were just told by Mitch Halpern he did not see the clash of heads. He thought it was a punch. So, as a result, if that cut should open and be a problem Torres could win this fight on it and uh, we want to point out and I, I, by the way I think Mitch Halpern is one of the best young referees in boxing it's tough to see that we get to see it very simply in uh, in slow motion but uh, it's hard to see these clashes of heads during the course of a fight but we do believe that is what caused the cut it certainly does look that way well <laughs> and, and as we speak to you I spill coke all over Dave Bontempo's tuxedo <laughs> Let's take a look at the numbers. And Morales with a significant edge there. Pretty much mirroring his dominance of this fight. 
<laughs> that kind of week. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a big brown spot on Dave's shirt, which I don't think is there now. During Ringside Report, you'll know because I'm a clutch. We <laughs> were interrupted of this NABF Super Bantamweight Championship. It's just one of those nights, folks. We lose main events, we spill drinks, but you know, they can't all be perfect on top rank boxing, can they? We've had a nice run on this series of about 15 years. A little bit of added intrigue here on the side. You know, Morales is not fighting like somebody totally concerned about the cut. He's been staying there, trying to be on the outside, jabbing doing what's been working. He's been jabbing more the last couple rounds anyway. Now, if you're Torres, you have to try to go right to work on it. A little over halfway through round eight. Whenever Torres is forced to come forward, he has more problems against Torres. And now you see Morales going southpaw, trying to mirror it. No real reason for that. Why would he want to get Torres out of his southpaw style? Morales has done well when Torres has been a southpaw. And now they're both southpaw. We mentioned earlier that Morales does, did switch, but uh, he didn't do it at all in this fight until now. And you start to wonder if over the course of a long fight, if the mind can wander a little bit, you get to different patches of a fight where it just... Fighters have to get over mental humps, and if they don't do that, you, you see this changing of styles, you see a little bit of lack of concentration. It does happen at spots over the course of a long bout. Even our minds have been known to wander over the course of a long bout from time to time, but not too often. In a short bout. <laughs> short bout. You're not even giving us the benefit of the doubt, are you? There's only seconds remaining here in round eight. My concentration will last until the end of this round, I assure you. We'll be back for round nine in this well-browned NABF title match. We're back for round nine in this NABF Super Bantamweight Championship. They are looking at the cut of Eric Morales. This is bad crucial, news. Crucial juncture. Very crucial because they did not rule that that was a clash of heads. So if this fight would have been stopped, Eric Morales would have lost. And there's something in the corner there. If you're the corner here at Morales, language barriers aside, there's got to be somewhere to try to get all over the referee to let them know, hey, don't ever come in here and stop this fight. You need to see the lobbying in the corner between rounds, which sometimes makes the difference of whether a fight is stopped or not. It was sort of interesting to see that as well because Morales had not shown any favoring of that area. Usually fighters will give it away if they're bothered by the cut. They'll blink, they'll touch it, they'll wince more. But Morales did not do that in the last round. Morales may not be aware of the situation he is in. And in this round, he is facing a Torres who probably is aware. <laughs> Morales has all the lead he needs, so he can buy time and try to get through this fight. And Morales coming forward now a bit more, and that's interesting, Dave, with the cut situation. Not really protecting, and doesn't also give the impression that he's desperate for a knockout to make sure that this doesn't come up again. And some of that can be the language barrier, maybe not being aware of what the referee might be thinking when he looks at it. You might think it's simply a routine check. Very good point. And now Morello is getting whacked by Torres more often. But in truth, the cut does not seem like it's opening up much. And what it is opening up is out to the side, not directly into the eye. The way that butt appeared pretty obvious it wasn't called. I wonder if Foxley will ever get to it. They try to go to instant replay to see if 
something really should have been ruled a butt and used television as the reference. For a clash of heads, that would be quite interesting. Now, it doesn't always show up, and in this case, it did show up very clearly. And again, we point out that it's a little tougher when you're in there and the action's going at full speed. So, some blood still from the left eye of Eric Morales. As we head into round 10, his job is to uh, play a protection game. We'll be back. Well, if you're Torres, this is swinging for the fences. Land the right hand to where the cut area is, hope it opens up, and that they stop the fight. Well, we'll see if that, in fact, would happen as we head into round 10. Eric Morales on the right of your screen. He is the youngster from Tijuana, Mexico, 19-year-old, undefeated against Juan Luis Torres, 28-year-old veteran. Morales opening up his jab department just a little bit, 17 of 42. Torres, one for eight. Like we said, he's going for the bombs. And he has thrown and landed so few jabs, Juan Torres. <laughs> you, can't, you can't have dominance more than that. It's not It's not often a statistic from CompuBox in the air makes us actually chuckle, is it? One number for the jab for this entire fight. Shouldn't there be something on the left of that five? You know what? If... If the, if the folks from CompuBox who do the punch profile here on ESPN were really nice guys, they would have inflated those figures for Juan Luis Torres <laughs> just to be nice to him, really. I'm, I know they're, I know that accuracy is the hallmark of what they do, but still, could have been nice to the guy. They're losing by 115 jets. Oh, gosh, that's terrible. And several reasons for it. One, Torres has decided not to jab. Two, he's been bobbing and weaving, getting inside and firing shots. He hasn't had to jab his way in. He didn't need a jab there. He landed a good right hand. The right hand gets in, but here's Morales going after him. There's some swelling on the right eye and the left eye, for that matter, of Torres. He has been whacked plenty with some big shots by Eric Morales. So the offense, certainly, in Morales' favor. <laughs> take a look at Torres he hasn't really been able to make that transformation to go after an opportunity he's fighting like someone who's used to being in a lot of close fights losing his share and just not going that little bit extra this fight is out there for him tonight via the cut Torres came in 12 and 6 with 8 KOs he's fighting out of San Diego California he is from Mexico originally though he's described as a part-time resident of San Diego it's for tax purposes. <laughs> Could well be, yes. Al Bernstein, Dave Von Tempo, we are delighted you joined us. We're going to explain this a little more um, as we go on, probably ringside the report as well. But Michael Nunn will not be fighting this evening. Came in overweight. Warren Williams, his original opponent, wanted him to make the weight, insisted Nunn wouldn't do it. Um, they uh, brought in a replacement, Terry B. He got here too late. And um, they can't get his medical test here in time. So they'll fight, but after we're off the air, they may fight. We'll be back with more. Stay with us. Well, right after Morales gets hit, he wants to get even right away. We get the leap again. He misses with that leap, then goes in there and gets it in there with the jab. He is um, he's perfecting that quite well. We're in round 11. To bring you up to date on this one, Eric Morales, the youngster on the left in the all-black trunks. It's Juan Luis Torres. Morales, a 19-year-old undefeated fighter, has basically been winning this fight throughout, but some rounds ago got a cut over his left eye, which in replay we saw came from a clash of heads. It was not ruled so, and so they have had to do patchwork on that cut, and Torres has been trying to sharpshoot it, but not that effective. And uh, an excellent example of that. Again, we're at a division where you should be seeing 65 punches around minimum from these guys. They're light fighters, they let their hands go fast, and Torres has been thinking too much defense first, too much spoiling first. Round 11, scheduled for 12, and that's how Davy B sees it. Very safe edge here for Morales, built up a, a huge edge, already nearly a shutout. Torres uh, might have stolen around the two in here, but Morales basically skating. And while Terry B got here too late, his medical records didn't get here in time. Davey B was not only here on time, we had no problem with her medical records, did we? I'm very happy to report that. <laughs> <laughs> We're very healthy. We're happy about that. 
halfway through round 11. Toby Gibson, the referee here in Las Vegas, went back to Sharon, Ohio for his 30-year class reunion, had a great time. He claims that he was confronted at this reunion with an Al Bernstein fan club. I did not know I had one in Sharon, Pennsylvania. Wow. Unbeknownst to me. Well, hey, you better get that in the newsletter. I've got, I, really, I think I better. So if you're listening for, uh, out there in Sharon, send me some dues or something. How many cities now? Uh, too, too numerous to mention. I don't want to get into it. A minute left to go. That's right near Youngstown, Ohio, where I'm going to be in September for the marriage of my sister-in-law, Kathy Rocco, and uh, Joe D'Onofrio. I'm going to be visiting that area and uh, hang out with the folks. And maybe the folks from Sharon will come in and visit with me. Uh, it would be a good double dip. Meanwhile, back on the ranch, <laughs> we have under a minute left to go here in round 11. Morales continues to stay on the outside, play the safe game, use the jab. Look for the right hand if it's there, and use the ring here, which now, it is good for him that this is a big ring, because it helps somebody trying to make sure a cut doesn't get any worse. So, it's a prevent defense for Eric Morales, and um, so far he's making it work. This youngster, this 19-year-old youngster, looks like he could be about three minutes away from winning the NABF Super Bantamweight Championship. That'll do it for round 11. Well, if you like speed here on ESPN, we have it for you. The World Formula One. Sunday here on ESPN, the Grand Prix of Britain. It will be Sunday, starting at 5.50 Pacific, 8.50 Eastern Time. Michael Schumacher won the last race, the French Grand Prix. And they moved 11 points ahead of Britain's Damon Hill in the championship standings. And so this race takes on added significance in that series. That'll be Sunday here on ESPN. Well, we got a little bit of everything right here. Both fighters getting shots off at the same time. One with the uppercut and one with the left cross. We head into round 12. That is Juan Luis Torres, who, a 28-year-old fighting out of San Diego, originally from Mexico, came in here 12 and 6, and that's Eric Morales, a 19-year-old from Tijuana, Mexico. He is 16 and 0 with 14 KOs, and tonight, Dave, I think it is safe to say that Morales has learned a lot in winning a fight over 12 rounds. We assume he's going to win it. He's done a good job with that adjusted. He's been forced to use different weapons throughout the fight, the jab. He's had to think a lot in this fight, certainly more than he wanted to. And when he looks back, there will be a lot to learn from him. He's carried himself well. His poise has been there. Hasn't gotten rattled by anything in this fight. And he may have made some noise with the 16-0 record with 14 knockouts, but in many ways, this is by far his best performance. And uh, he could walk on the nice way. Big edge for Eric Morales. So he said it's just a matter of staying upright. And from the perspective of Torres, you're looking at somebody who essentially has done half the job tonight. He's gotten inside, he's shown some moves, he's taken some things away, but he hasn't launched an attack. Except for spurts. It would have been interesting to see what would have happened had Torres opened up throughout this fight, gambled, and really made Moran Morales stand on him because there were times he backed Morales up and Torres could have done some good work there. Juan Luis Torres hasn't exactly gone after it. Until just a moment ago, he had thrown only seven punches in this round. <laughs> when you can chart the progress that easily over the course of a round, it's really astonishing that Torres, who needs a knockout, would not be coming forward here trying to get it. Normally, uh, Bob Canovio from Punch Profile counts on a computer. I noticed he's counting on his fingers for Juan Luis Torres in this round. Or his toes, I'm sorry. He's getting to the fingers. He might get to the fingers. Bob's got to start wearing shoes at these fights. He really does. But he points out they can get away with Sanders. And Morales, that, there's a three-punch combination by Morales showing 
some signs of what could have been throughout this bout, but just not enough of it. So while Luis Torres is showing a little aggression, but it is much too little too late, we think. And so the vacant NABF title, we feel, will probably rest on the head of Eric Morales. Final moments of this Super Bantamweight match. Good hook by Torres. That'll do it. Eric Morales, uh, not exactly jubilant in his corner, but you would think he knows that he won this fight. So far, he has seemed to be a guy who stays on one gear, no matter what. Has shown very little emotion in this fight, and ice water veins are, are not a bad thing to have for certain no. type of fighters. We've seen guys like Johnny Tapia who need the emotion and have to have that adrenaline rush throughout the course of a fight, but uh, a much different look for Morales here. And for Torres, this 28-year-old thought this would be a stepping stone, a good opportunity for him, but it was not that. You can see the edge for, uh, I shouldn't call it an edge, it was a landslide. In electoral votes, he would have won bigger, I think, than even Bush. <laughs> Or Nixon over McGovern. Or Nixon over back McGovern. Back those days. It's true. I'm not old enough to remember that. <laughs> right. The, and Torres wasn't something that Morales took away from him in this fight either. Torres more or less took it away from himself. That's true. Well, we believe, and Dave feels in his scoring, that uh, this young man, Eric Morales, has won the NABF Super Bantamweight title. That cut, which came uh, in the middle of the fight, they dealt with it extremely well in his corner. Excellent job of, uh, of cut work there. And you can see it's a pretty bad gash. So they'll have to make sure that heals up before uh, this young man gets in the ring again. So his first outing here in the United States turns out to be a good one. And how many times have we seen fighters with a big knockout record then get into a distance fight and lose their sense of direction of poise, but not this time. Morales really was good. Let's go up to Jake Gutierrez in the middle of the ring. Jake's having some microphone troubles, and uh, we'll... We'll hang loose until they get fixed. But um, double clutching. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecard for the official decision. The scoring is as follows. Judge Chuck Williams scores the bout 118 to 109. Judge Bill Graham scores the bout 119 to 109. And Judge Al Siciliano scores about 120 to 108. A unanimous decision for the new NABF Super Bantamweight Champion, Eric the Terrible Morales. So Eric Morales wins by a huge margin, not unexpected to us, and I'm sure not to you as well. This young man has his 17th win as a professional. He's got the NABF title. He'll be celebrating tonight. We'll be back for more. Stay with us.